So, thank you for having me. I'm very glad that all you came here today. A few words about me and about our team. Uh, I'm David and I'm leading. We are now 17 people. User experience design studio. You can see uh, some of our guys here on the picture. And what we do is uh, we are working with product guys like you to design uh, outstanding product experiences. And uh, what we usually do is that we delegate uh, a designer and a researcher uh, to design those digital products. And in our experience, this is a very good combination because designers are very creative. They can build prototypes, they can do beautiful pixel perfect UI. And on the other hand, our researchers are like uh, business analysts. They can uh, do in depth research and get customer insights. And this combina with this combination, we can design products that people will actually use and love. So what I, I'm going to talk about today is uh, four design stories uh, that will showcase why this combination works. So let's get into this thing. Uh, my first case study is about a CRM system. So salespeople use this uh, CRM uh, to keep track of their prospects and leads. And this is a very old design, like five years old old design of this uh, software. And to redesign this software, we did some field studies. So we met with a guy called Attila. He's a sales guy and he's, he was using this software. And we spent a few days together. And uh, during one of these days, we realized that what Attila did every morning is he opened uh, the CRM system and he opened the profile pages of uh, each prospect on different tabs. And he had um, a Firefox plugin that let him to color those tabs. So the dark blue tabs were the prospects that were important. They were the guys who were ready to buy. And light blue tabs were the not so important leads. So when we so that he does that, uh, we realize that it's very important for those sales guys to prioritize their leads. So when we let redesigned this application, we put little colorful tags next to uh, each, each lead, each profile. So when they open uh, this application, they will see uh, which prospects are the important ones that they have to start work with and which are the less important ones. So with this move, we can free up like half an hour for Attila every morning, which was of course very useful for him. So what we learned from, what you can learn from this story is that if you go out from your office and if you actually meet with the people you are designing for, uh, you, will, you can get very useful insights and uh, you can design a much better product. My second story is about a mortgage calculator. Uh, what you can see here, it's, it's very simple, basically. Uh, you can set the type of the property you want to buy. You can set the mortgage term. So how long will it take to pay back the money to the bank? You can set the mortgage amount and hit the calculate button. So when we designed this calculator, we invited a lot of people to our office who were actually buying apartments that time. And uh, we observed how they use this design. And we learned that there are two phases of uh, buying a mortgage. The first phase is when people try to find out how much credit do they have. So they know how much is their salary, how much money they can pay back to the bank every month. So they try to calculate how much, uh, how big loan they can get from the bank. 
And when they know the amount, for example, they know, okay, I can uh, get like 10 million Hungarian forints, then they compare different, uh, different offers and they try to find the best offer for the bank, from the banks. So as you can see, uh, there's one big problem with this design about uh, it doesn't support the first phase at all. So you can't search by writing in uh, the monthly uh, costs of the, uh, of the mortgage. So, however, it is, it is a very easy to use calculator. Uh, it's not useful for the people. So we redesigned it. We put two tabs on this new design. There is uh, the traditional tab where you can uh, search based on the mortgage amount. And uh, there's another tab where you can uh, search based on the monthly payment. The other thing that confused uh, people uh, on this calculator was the mortgage term. So uh, let's be honest, most of us don't really know what will happen to us in a few years. How can we make decisions about like in what will happen in 20 years time? So do I want to get this mortgage for like 20 years or 25 or just 10? It's very difficult to make decisions, uh, make uh, this kind of long-term decisions. So when we designed the result page for this calculator, uh, we decided to put uh, the different uh, versions of the same uh, loan next to each other. So you can see the 10 uh, years, the twen uh, 15 years, and the 20 years uh, year long mortgage. So this way you can compare the different numbers and it's a little bit easier to make decisions because now you have something to compare with. So uh, from this story uh, we learned that we have to test every design we create. Because if you test those designs with real people from your audience, uh, you will get very useful insights. And uh, from those insights, with those insights, you can um, design a much better product. So the best way of doing this is to create a quick prototype first, test it with people, iterate on this prototype, and uh, then do the final pixel perfect design and then develop it, of course. Okay. Uh, so I think many of you are product managers or product owners here. Can you put up your hands if you are some kind of product management guys? Or you are leading product development teams? Some of you, yes. Okay, cool. So I think. Many of you ha have to make decisions about what feature to build next, because that's one of the most important questions uh, a product manager or product owner has to answer. Uh, we have uh, limited resources. What will we use those resources for? We worked together with a startup to create a Tumblr add-on. And uh, of course, they were a startup. They had very limited resources. And we wanted to find out uh, what will be the next feature that we have to build. So what you can see here is uh, this, this Tumblr add-on is, uh, is, is for content discovery. So you can find uh, nice pictures you can share on your Tumblr blog. And in the first version, there is a caption, caption uh, below the picture. And in the first version, you couldn't edit that caption. So we had the idea uh, to make this uh, editing possible. But instead of developing this feature, we just add a little pencil icon there. And we measured how many people will click on that icon. And we get quite good results. Many people were clicking on that icon. And it was fake. So if you clicked on that icon, a pop-up came up and it says, sorry, uh, we are very busy building this feature and it will be ready soon, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so, so it was really just an icon and it took us like half an hour to implement this feature. 
uh, and we measured uh, the clicks and it was quite successful. So, but after that, instead of starting coding this feature, we changed the pop-up. So now it shows uh, you the premium plan and uh, you can see that uh, the first feature in the premium plan is custom caption. So actually it isn't a real premium plan thing. If you click on the PayPal button, you will get another pop-up that says that, oh, sorry, it's not really working yet. Uh, but this way we could measure how many people would actually pay for this function. And this trick is called uh, fake door testing. And this is a very, very nice uh, method to test uh, which uh, feature will be used by uh, your users. Yeah, I know. It's a little bit like nasty trick. So be careful with it. But even big companies like the television brand here, uh, RTL Club, is using this uh, fake door testing. And even like other big companies like Ustream is using this. Uh, so, so be careful, but you can use this to, to test which features will be popular. Okay, so this is fake door testing. This was my search story, and uh, here comes my last design and research story for today. And it's about self-driving cars. It's a very hot topic nowadays. Uh, today, the Hungarian Prime Minister mentioned that we have to produce self-driving technology here in the country. Yeah, no comments here. So, yeah, yeah, he, he said we have to. Uh, so, uh, why we did a, a project uh, about self-driving. Uh, we tried to design the user interface, of course, uh, of those cars. And what you can see here is that we imagined uh, a car where there's uh, a tablet in the middle of the dashboard, and this tablet will be one of the interfaces where you can control the car or set uh, or adjust settings. So the big problem with self-driving technology is, uh, is trust. You know, there are many cars in the roads, uh, many autonomous cars on the roads in San Francisco, and now we have data. We know that those cars are uh, actually safe, so they can drive safer than humans. But still, if you sit in those cars, you are, you are afraid, right? It's like airplanes. We know that they are very safe, safe but still, we have this feeling. So the designer's job here is to build this trust in the car. And uh, to do that, uh, we examined how, uh, we, uh, how we behave in the real cars. So if there's someone else is driving next to you and uh, there is a dangerous situation, uh, you look at the face of the driver to check whether he sees that obstacle coming. And uh, we put this uh, tablet there, which will be uh, the face of our uh, self-driving software. So all the time, anytime if you look there, you will see uh, what the car sees around you. This is the first prototype we did. Uh, you can see that there is the street. There are some obstacles like pedestrians, a bicycle, maybe some other cars, and and we highlighted the the dangerous obstacle obstacles, the dangerous objects with the red box. So the man standing there and the bicycle, and of course we tested it with people. So unfortunately we don't really have a self-driving car here. I'm sorry, but we tried to mimic it with a real car and with a tablet and with this uh, quick prototype. And when we showed it to, to people, um, they understood this, uh, this interface. They understood that those uh, red 
objects are the sources of danger. And, but they tried to do something because they thought that the computer highlights those objects because you have to interact, you have to do something with, uh, with them. So they try to uh, touch the tablet, for example. And this is a problem because it's an autonomous car and you can do anything. It drives itself. So this design was actually bad. People became very stressed because they saw uh, the danger and they couldn't do anything. So in our final design, we used a different solution. We tested this also with people. And in this solution, we drew just a red line between uh, the dangerous object and ourselves. So it's like a fence. It separates us from, uh, from uh, that object. And it also tells or shows that the car is like creating a separate lane for that uh, bike. So it won't enter that our area. And when we tested this with uh, people, uh, it was working, working well. They understood this thing. I also have uh, this animation that shows you how it works. Okay, so this was another story uh, about why user testing and research is important. And sometimes your original idea, your first idea is not working. Uh, with real people. So you just have to test and iterate on those ideas and uh, create quick prototypes. And basically that's what we do at UX Studio. So this was my fourth story. Oops. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, if you want to read more stories like this, I just uh, wrote a book. It's called UX Design, surprisingly. And you can order the book uh, on uxstudio.hu slash uxconf. It's in Hungarian, so uh, sorry for the English speakers. Okay, um, so thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, uh, just ask. Thanks. So my question would be, that how long does it did it took, for example, for the last example, to get from from the very first prototype until the final design? How many iterations you run, etc. In time, okay. So, how many uh, iterations and how how, how much time does it take? Um, yep. So, it was like this project had um, a lot of like features. So, this was just a small part of this thing. So we spent the first week with brainstorming and ideation uh, about many, many aspects of self-driving. And then on the second week, we did prototyping and testing. It was basically, this part was just one week. Uh, so we created some uh, f uh, quick scratches and, uh, and wireframes. We tested those um, and uh, next day then uh, we uh, did it again and again, uh, so yeah, it was it was basically one week. Um, yeah. What we usually do with uh, because it was a, it was a lab project for us. What we do with real projects, uh, for example, like when we design some kind of enterprise software, is uh, that we are working in uh, week-long design sprints, and all those design sprints have uh, a design phase and a research phase. So we start designing something, uh, then at the end of the week, Thursday, Friday, we do our tests. So next week, when there's the sprint meeting, we can say, okay, that's what we designed. Those were the feedback from uh, the users, and we can now make decisions. Some part is working well, we can uh, send it to development. Some part is not really working well, uh, we can iterate uh, one more round on that. Okay, any other questions? No, then thank you very much for your attention.